what we did last time. So we showed that uh, uh, if you estimate mu by the following, uh, so you have um, a sequence of uh, independent uh, identically distributed random variable. Which is to say that these are just the outcomes of the same experiment, right? Of the, the most kind of common interpretation, the most common use is that the you perform the same measurements with the same instrument uh, n many times. And then we saw that the mean is, uh, uh, which is just x1 plus, plus xn divided by n, is unbiased estimator because the expected value of the mean is precisely uh, mu if these are unbiased uh, uh, estimations, right? So, uh, and uh, if you uh, estimate uh, variance as uh, um, sum of xi minus x uh, mean, right, uh, squared, divided by n minus 1, right, this is uh, i goes from 1 to n, then the expected value of v of x, right, of this vector, is precisely uh, the variance of uh, each of these random vari variables because they are equally distributed. Yes? Uh, is it possible to turn the lights on? Let us do some investigation. Ah, I know how we can have to use this. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Look, why lights? We have. Uh, thank you for reminding me. It will be also easier for the camera. So let there be light. Speaking about let there be light, you know where this comes from, right? From the Bible. So uh, Feynman, the famous physicist, uh, uh, used to tell people that if mathematics disappears, uh, uh, physics would be set back for one week. Because he thought that everything we can do with uh, kind of a little bit of mathematics, right? Um, and then uh, one of, and he said it once at the conference, and uh, I think McKean, uh, one of harmonic analysts, said, yes, that's true. If uh, mathematics disappeared, uh, physics would be set back for a week, but that would be the week in which God created everything. <laughs> so, okay, so. Um, this is very useful to know, and last time we saw why we divide with n minus 1 rather than n, because x bar is not a true mu, but just an estimator, uh, a biased estimator of mu. Um, so what v want, <coughs> so you see, v, this v, just like this x, is a function of this vector x. And it gives you an estimation uh, given um, uh, random variables uh, as inputs, right? Uh, so, <coughs> um, and this is what you have in practice, especially in machine learning. You have certain realizations of some process, and you are trying to figure out the statistical properties uh, of the process that generates this data, right? Um, so this is very important, and uh, 
One of the most important estimator is uh, something, and it's ubiquitous in machine learning. It's called the uh, maximum likelihood estimate, estimator. So to give you, this is likelihood, yes? Uh, for the variance of x5, that's supposed to be sigma squared on n. This is... Uh, uh, because as, the, as you increase the number of elements in your average, the variance is going to decrease. Uh, uh, well, uh, this is... Uh, so you see... Uh, let me see. Uh, now this is the estimator of the variance. So that's a very good point. Uh, you have to be careful. There's a two different concepts. Right? <coughs> One is the estimator of the underlying quantity. So I take measurements uh, right, of certain quantity. And then in this way, I estimate uh, the, the, the quantity itself. Now the variance, so notice this is estimation of V of X. What you are saying is estimation of uh, X. Uh, sorry, the variance, the variance of x bar. So this is the estimation of the variance of these random variables. This is the variance of the estimator. And this is, in fact, v divided by n, which is sigma squared divided by n. This means if I use this guy, the variance of this estimator will be 1 over n times the variance of the variance, right? Now, so this is the variance of an estimator of the true value. Now, this here is a totally different problem you are no longer estimating the quantity itself. You are estimating the variance of these random variables. Right? So, for example, if I take a whole bunch of measurements, I take the mean, I'll get an estimator of the true quantity. Right? And its variance is rather small. It's variance divided by n. But now I ask myself the other problem, which is this. I take these measurements. Uh, I'm no longer interested in estimating the true value, but I want to figure out what is the variance of the measuring instrument. Uh, also, is that supposed to be x with a vector, or is that e, v, x in there? Uh, wait. Uh, sorry, uh, the... OK, so this is, this is vector. This is not. Yeah, I read that as a Ah, OK. So I should avoid the, Let me then put it like this. Uh, so this is the expected uh, value of V of x1, xn. And the expected value uh, is, in fact, uh, the true Variance. It's a biased estimator of uh, the true variance uh, of the measurement, right? So <coughs> I do the measurements and I get different values. And I'm asking myself, gee, what is the average error of my instrument? Uh, and this gives me an unbiased estimator of the error of the instrument. Uh, very good. Uh, very good point. Thank you very much. This is why it's good to come to lectures rather than rely 
on the recordings because you can stop me and ask questions, right? And if you watch just the video, it doesn't work that way. Okay. So what is maximum likelihood estimator? In a sense, a likelihood is inverse of probability in a sense. In what sense? There are two things that you can do. Assume, so, uh, uh, situation one is uh, you know uh, the probability to uh, get ahead probability p to get ahead of a, a biased coin. Right? So p can be anything. Uh, uh, you want to find out the probability of outcome uh, head, head, tail, head, tail, tail, head, 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 say this, right? So you know the probability distribution of your random variable and if you, so you, uh, of, or in this case will be the outcome of the coin and you want to compute the outcome to get a particular, the probability to get this particular outcome. What is the probability? So this probability P of H, 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 uh, T, H, uh, T, uh, T, uh, T, H, H is equal uh, P times P, it's P times P times P uh, times 1 minus P times P times 1 minus P times 1 minus P uh, times P times P, which is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, p to the 6, and 1 minus p to the cubic, cubic power, right? So you know the likelihood to have, I mean the probability to, have, to get ahead when you toss a coin, and you are interested, what's the probability to end up with this outcome? The likelihood is exactly the opposite. So situation two. Uh, you know uh, the outcome. Uh, so you did an experiment with a coin you know nothing about. You do the experiment and you get the outcome H, 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 T, H, T, T, H, H. But you do not know uh, what coin you have. I uh, you do not know P. So you want to find out what is P. Right? So this is when you know the probability, you can compute uh, the probability of a certain event. Opposite, you don't know the probability 
what coin you have, but you perform an experiment and you want to deduce what's the, what kind of coin you have. Well, clearly, you cannot find B with certainty, right? Because any coin can produce any outcome, but with different probabilities. So you want to find out what P makes this outcome <coughs> maximally likely right so so again if I know the probability of, of what kind of coin I have I can tell in advance the probability to get any outcome opposite in real life, uh, often we know the outcomes uh, and we want to deduce uh, what from what probability distribution this outcome comes. Uh, so this is kind of machine learning uh, procedure, right? You, you, you know the outcome and the machine has to tell you a pro what is uh, a good estimate for what kind of coin you have, what is P. And uh, which P do we choose? Uh, well, a good strategy would be to choose P that makes such outcome maximally likely, that maximizes probability of this outcome. Do you understand the, the concept? Yeah, so would that be the outcome that produces at least five heads and three tails in that sequence? So, very good. So, intuitively, <coughs> here we have twice as many heads to number of tails. So, what do you think, what should P be? Over three, so but so that's oops, that's intuitive, right? So let's see if this is really the most likely um, probability to produce such outcome. How do I find probability that maximizes the? How do I find p for which this event is maximally? has the largest probability to occur. This is the probability, if I don't know P, right? This is the probability to get this outcome. How do I find which for which P this is uh, the largest? Exactly. So uh, we have to find P for which uh, P to the sixth times one minus P uh, cube is uh, uh, maximal. So how do we solve this? We simply compute D over DP of uh, P to the sixth times one minus P cube. What is this? So product rule, so this will be 6 times p to the 5th power times uh, 1 minus p cube plus p to the 6th times 3 times 1 minus p squared and then the derivative of minus 1 inside will be minus 1. <laughs> Right? That's just using <coughs> the product and the chain rule. And we want to set this equal to zero. So let's see. I can, so clearly if P is zero, then probability of this outcome is also zero. So I can assume that uh, P is not <coughs> zero 
and I can assume that P is not 1, because if P is 1, again, probability of this is 0, right, because of this factor here. <coughs> so this means that I can divide both sides with P to the fifth times 1 minus P squared, because they are not 0. And what do I get? I get 6. Uh, uh, times 1 minus p, and then I have minus uh, 3 times p equal to 0. So what do I get? 6 minus 6p minus 3p equals to 0, which gives me 9p equals 6, or p is equal 6 divided by 9, which is 2 thirds exactly what we would expect. So we computed P that makes <coughs> this outcome maximally likely. Very good. Um, now, but this is a heuristics, right? Why choosing whatever is maximally likely is optimal, right? There is no prima facie um, uh, good reason for that. And in fact, sometimes maximum likelihood can produce terrible estimates. So here is one experiment. So we are moving to this board. Uh, <coughs> uh, you have a box, right? And inside the box, you have a bunch of balls all numbered between 1 and n. So you have n balls that are labeled, labels on the balls. You may do the following experiment. You pick one ball from the box, and you have to say from, and you see the number. You have to estimate how many balls are in the box. Right? So you take a ball and you get, say that the, in the ball uh, has a number k. You have to estimate what n is. What would maximal likelihood estimation propose to do? What's maximum likelihood estimator in this case? Yes? Uh, how can I make sure that k is the uh, maximum? <coughs> okay, so I kind of swapped a little bit under the, right? How do we find out whether something is minimum or maximum? Huh? Okay. You have to find the second derivative and see whether it's positive or negative, but I didn't bother with that. You just trust me. <laughs> well, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so if I differentiate, uh, um, uh, this once again, what do I get? Oh, I get a mess. So you do it at home. <laughs> draw the graph. You draw the graph, exactly. You draw the graph. What does the graph look like? Uh, it has 0 and 1 at 0 points. And the uh, largest power, because this is negative, is negative, so it looks like this. <coughs> Voila, very good. <laughs> We have computer scientists, we use a special form of mathematics, so it's called hand waving. <laughs> okay, so what is maximum likelihood <coughs> estimation if you took out ball K? In what event, how many balls inside will make this outcome maximally likely? If every single ball in the box. But they are all numbered in consecutive numbers, uh, right. from 1 to n. I'm asking for what n, taking, uh, if you take out ball and it says k, for what n is this outcome most likely? Okay. Hmm? One. Okay. Well, if k is equal to 1, the only outcome you can get is uh, 
just one, there but is. you got K. Is, is it possible that there are less than K balls in the box? Uh, no, because voila, you found the Kth ball, and you know that they are consecutively ordered. So we know that n is bigger than k. Well, if there are n many balls, every ball is equally likely. So for what n will this be? So the probability of any ball, <coughs> probability to get k, is equal 1 over n. Yes? Exactly. So the max likelihood estimator is uh, n is equal to <coughs> whatever the, to the value of the random variable, which is this number, uh, equal to k. How good is this estimator? What is the expected, let's see whether it's unbiased. What's the expected, let's call this estimator, so uh, E of x is just x, right? Uh, well, this is now expectation, so let's call it uh, um, S. Uh, so what is the expected value of this uh, Estimate. Well, probability uh, to get any ball is 1 over n, right? So you get with probability 1, one over n, uh, you get uh, 1 as outcome, plus with the same probability outcome 2, plus uh, you get outcome n with probability also 1 over n, uh, so this is uh, expected value of S is this, which is 1 over n times uh, sum of the first n values is n, n plus 1 divided by 2. So you cancel out this and you get n plus 1 divided by 2. Which means that this estimator is horrendously biased because it will give you about one half on average. It will be one half of what number of balls inside the box, right? Do you understand this? Um, so expected value is each outcome times probability of the outcome. Uh, so you might have drawn box with number one, this is the probability box, of, I mean the ball with number two, this is the probability and so forth. When you sum it up, you get this. And this is much, much smaller than n. So bad in the sense biased estimator. Can you think of a better estimator? Intuitively, I draw a ball. I am equally likely to draw a small ball and equally likely to draw a large ball, so most likely my choices are where? Towards the middle, right? So what would be a good estimator? Double the ball that you choose. Exactly. So let's see if doubling is a uh, are good. Maybe we have to tiny little bits. Uh, so let's then look at estimator of x equals 2x. So what do we get then? Then probability to get... Uh, um, what happens? So. Deliver your pitch, answer the questions, sit down. What? What was that? <laughs> PA, maybe? This is Big Brother spying on us. <laughs> I knew it would happen. I knew it would happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see if I take 2x, what I get 
uh, for expected value. So expected value, so let's call this uh, S1. The expected value of S1 is uh, then 1 times, uh, um, <coughs> sorry, so this will be now 2 times uh, 1 over n plus uh, 2 times 2 times 1 over n plus 2 times 3 times 1 over n plus so, four, so far 2 times n times 1 over n which is of course equal to 2, 2 over n times uh, um, n n plus 1 divided by 2 and uh, if you cancel out this and you cancel out this, you get n plus 1. Uh, so then the best estimator will be S, oops, uh, S2 of x, which is just 2x minus 1. Because the expected value of this guy, E of S2, will be precisely n. You can... Uh, do the calculation and verify. Okay? So maximum likelihood can produce pretty bad estimator, but this happens essentially only when the sample size is small. One can show that um, maximum likelihood as the size of the sample grows, approaches optimal estimator, and even the distribution of errors as n grows starts looking more and more as a normal distribution. Right? So maximum likelihood, this is highly non-trivial theorem, but uh, um, uh, one can prove that you uh, take it on on uh, faith. Okay. So, uh, let us do a few examples, right? So, uh, say, um, so assume that uh, uh, you um, have an instrument uh, uh, which is unbiased. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, I.e. expected value of the measurement is equal to the true value. Uh, I.e. Expected value of error is zero. Okay? Any questions so far? No? Okay, so assume that you have an instrument which is unbiased um, and um, you uh, have made um, n measurements. <coughs> I'm sorry. And assume, moreover, that the error is uh, uh, normally distributed. And that uh, this error is normally how many L's in normally? Two L's. Normally distributed, no? Um, okay. Um, you made N measurements x1 up to xn, 
and you wish uh, to estimate uh, the true value, i.e. Uh, mu of uh, uh, your distribution, right? Because the error expected value of error is zero, and uh, the variance uh, of your instrument. Uh, let's see what maximum likelihood will tell us uh, how to do that. Uh, you see, this is really important nowadays because <coughs> when we don't know the exact mechanism of the process, uh, usually the best what we can do is to model it as a, as a random variable Assuming that the outcomes uh, are uh, kind of, to some degree, uh, random, and uh, the, so you want to estimate the, the parameters of the <coughs> process that uh, produce this data. For example, the, uh, the expected value which in case of unbiased estimators would be an estimation of the true value. And you want to see how much this process has tendency to vary. OK, so let's see. Ah, so maximum likelihood, we have to define it what it is. Huh? Uh, is uh, uh, is uh, the value of okay uh, is four discrete variables. The probability distribution. Uh, which makes uh, such outcome maximum 